This is one of the most important videos you'll ever see in your life. This video is about to save your vision from an unnecessary surgery that's happening around the world because of lack of knowledge. I'm pretty sure you have never heard about this eye disease called degenerative retinoscosis. I'm not talking about X-linked juvenile retinoscosis. I'm talking about this one. And take a look and see why it is extremely important for you to know about this disease. Reading from Wikipedia. This type of retinoscosis, degenerative, degenerative retinoscosis, this type of retinoscosis is very common with the prevalence of up to 7% in normal persons. It causes is unknown. It can easily be confused with the retinal detachment by the non-expert observer. And in difficult cases, even the expert may have difficulty differentiating the two. Such differentiation is important since retinal detachment almost always requires treatment, while retinal cases never. Unfortunately, one still sees cases of uncomplicated retinal cases treated. If you don't know about this disease, how do you stop an expert from doing a surgery that you don't need? Please help me make this video viral. So we save 7% of the population from this, unfortunately. I founded the nonprofit, the Genetic Retinoscopy Society, to raise awareness for this disease. Notice again, this is not the same as Eklin juvenile retinoscosis. Let's immediately jump to several cases of people being misdiagnosed with retinal detachment while having simple degenerative retinoscosis by going back to my nonprofit webpage uh, with the compilation of articles that I uh, gather from the internet. I came across this one, examples of misdiagnosed cases. by Harvey Lincoln and Ingrid Tracy, 2012. Case number one, a 26 year old male was referred to the retina service after three retina specialists had diagnosed bilateral retina detachment and recommended urgent surgery. Read again, not one, not two, but three retina experts recommending urgent surgery. He was asymptomatic. No symptom, no change in vision. His vision bad as best as always. No floaters, no flashes, no curtain, nothing. And 2020 visual acuity, being rushed to surgery. Luckily for that patient, he searched for a fourth opinion, and he came across a retinoscopy expert who discovered the patient was diagnosed as having retinoscopy with multiple inner layer breaks in both eyes. Even while finding multiple inner layer breaks, the patient didn't go through any surgery. He was only taught how to monitor his peripheral visual and asked to report any change without delay. His visual acuity remained 2020 in both eyes. Even with breaks and he was not touched. There are more cases here. Case number two is very interesting. Case number three, I'm going to show you case number four. Case number four, a 26 year old asymptomatic female came to the retina service. Asymptomatic. Nothing, nothing, nothing. On a day prior to a scheduled retina surgery elsewhere, looking for a second opinion. A retina specialist two days before had diagnosed a retina detachment in her right eye. The patient has been, the patient was diagnosed, bilateral retinoscopy was, was diagnosed, and the patient was advised how to monitor her visual field and act to report any change. No surgery, and the patient has been followed for 18 years with no change. We have seen here several cases of people being rushed to surgery by even up to three retina experts while being 2020 and without symptom perfect vision uh, when their uncomplicated 
simple retinoscosis was confused with retinal detachment. Let's keep reading from this page. So now retinoscosis is a well-recognized clinical entity which was first described by Bartels in 1933. So it's well-recognized clinical entity, but you don't know about it. And even doctors don't know about it. And I'm sure that even eye doctors don't know about it, optometrists and maybe eye experts don't know about it. Because you've seen here three experts not mentioning retinoscosis. If a doctor is talking about retinal detachment, three specialists, and no symptom in 2020, and they're, they're not bringing degenerative retinoscosis into the conversation, obviously they don't know about degenerative retinoscosis. Let's go back to my webpage. Another example of misdiagnosis, an 83-year-old male was referred to a retina clinic for a retinal detachment, which was described as close to the macula in his right eye. No ophthalmology intervention was necessary. Signs and symptoms of retinal detachment were reviewed, and he was provided with reassurance. Let's go back to the definition from Wikipedia. This type of retinoscosis is very common with a prevalence of up to 7% in normal persons. Its cause is unknown. It can easily be confused with retinal detachment by the non-expert observer, and in difficult cases even the expert may have difficulty differentiating the two. Such differentiation is important since retinal detachment almost always requires treatment while retinoscosis never itself requires treatment. Unfortunately, one still sees cases of uncomplicated retinoscosis treated by laser retinopexy or creopexy in an attempt to stop its progression towards the macula. Such treatments are not only ineffective but unnecessary risk complications. And with this, it is very important. There is always vision loss in the region of the ascesis as the sensory retina is separated from the ganglion layer. But like the losses in the periphery, it goes unnoticed. There is always vision loss in the region of the ascesis. So don't fall for that common test in the retina room where the doctor comes and asks you, can you count these two fingers? Two, yes. Can you count these fingers? Oh, oh, no, a little bit. If you just missed a nail, that proves you have a retina detachment. You see, with, with this eye, you're counting the two. And at the same height, you're not counting this eye. So that means you have a retina detachment. False. This is not a valid test for people with retinoscosis because it is normal to have vision loss in the periphery region of the skisses. Let's go to an article from who I consider the biggest authority in retinoscosis, Dr. Annie Bayer. Perspectives on the management of the complications of senile retinoscosis. Annie Bayer, 2002. Introduction. Although first reported 68 years ago, and by now a well-known and commonly recognized disease, and as I said, you didn't know about this, scenario retinoscosis is still a poorly understood and somewhat mystifying entity. The fact that it is almost always without symptoms explains why most cases go without detection for the lifetime of the patient. This absence of symptoms has effectively prevented very many unnecessary operations by surgeons hoping to eradicate or control the disease. So you, I hope you get your own idea of what that means. Your absence of symptoms, your being perfectly 2020 vision with no change has prevented you from an unneeded surgery. So retinoscopy is the only disease in the world that having it, if you don't know it, it is a terrible idea to go to a doctor because you can be scheduled for a surgery you don't need by three or more experts. So that leads me to ask you eight questions. The first one is, what happens when you are 20, 20, 
but you go for normal presbyia reading glasses with perfect vision to an optometrics and he pops the question may I dilate your retina and next thing you are scheduled by three experts by a retinal detachment surgery that you don't need. How many of you have gone through that? My second question, if we go back to the article of the examples of misdiagnosed cases, how many of you succumb to that surgery not seeking a fourth opinion but after the third opinion? How many of you succumb to this surgery after just the second opinion? How many of you succumb to this surgery with after the only first opinion? And read this. The differentiation of sonority noscuses is usually not difficult. Differentiation from retinal detachment is usually not difficult. In an an effort to avoid misdiagnosis and unnecessary surgery of retinoscopy, the retina specialist should take into account the semi-transparency. How many of you had, uh, especially who did not take into account the semi-transparency, and you went through an unneeded retinal detachment surgery? Uh, let's go back to Wikipedia to ask you the fourth question: How many? of you were the victim of this unfortunate one still sees cases having surgery. There's always vision loss in the periphery. That's my five question. How many of you have succumbed to the uh, counting fingers? Count here? Oh no, I don't count. You say you have a retinal detachment and you are scheduled for the surgery. You don't need. Take a look at this piece of art from another of the articles in my comp compilation of written excuses article. This is a masterpiece. Take a look. This doctor gets a report from a patient and he creates a quiz for his colleges. And the answers are below. So let's go to the answers. For question Two, the answer is B. Let's go to the question two. Uh, for question one, the answer is D. Let's go to the question one. What do the changes in her retina represent? Answer is D, B and C. A retina detachment, peripheral retinoscosis. The question four, the answer is D. Let's go to the question four. What is the correct diagnosis for this patient? D, combined retinoscosis and retinal detachment. Combine both. Five, the answer is A. Ans a question for five, how should this patient be managed? A, close up, no surgery. How many of you did not end up with a follow up, no surgery, and end up blind from a surgery you don't need? And reading from this same article, retinoscosis is often mistaken for retinal detachment. How many of you have been part of this often? Take a look at this. So how should we manage this patient? Traditionally, combined retinoscopy and retinal detachment warranted treatment. However, in a published natural history, 2,289 with asymptomatic retinoscopies were followed up for nine years, no surgery. So my question, which is uh, number seven, or not number eight, how many of you went the traditional way. Let's look at another piece of art.
Combined right diagnostics is detachment involving the phobia managed with observation. How many of you have retinoscisis detachment combined involving the phobia not managed with observation? Read this about retinoscisis. It appears that no meaningful justification for treatment has been established. The next article is going to be our graduation of PhD in retinoscisis. Take a look. So far, we've been talking about a symptomatic retinoscis, but this article is about a case by J. Dronian W. Paul um, D. McLeod, a spontaneous stabilization of symptomatic schizophrenia detachment. It's about a patient with two-day history of flashes and curtains, all the symptoms of a retinal detachment, and look at the comment. This is the first report of symptomatic schizophrenia detachment that settled without surgery. We agree with Bayer that the appropriate management for non-progressive excuses detachment is to do nothing. We need to stop this unneeded retinal detachment surgery. This often confused this unfortunately. We need to put retinal schizophrenia in the map. Uh, please donate to my degenerative retinal society to make this a reality.